Hello there, my fellow tech aficionados, and welcome back to the channel. If you do not quite live under a rock when it comes to tech, you may have already noticed that we got quite some news from the folks over at Snapdragon, who just unveiled their latest silicon powering high-end next-gen phones and laptops at their annual tech fest, the Snapdragon Summit 2025 in Hawaii. We have also been invited to Maui, so we not only get this extremely pleasant change of scenery, but we also have had the chance to gain some exclusive information and insights as well as some very early hands-on time with reference designs for both phones and laptops. So how about you get yourself one of your favorite refreshments, sit back, relax, and let me give you a Hawaiian-flavored glimpse into what the latest Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, powering all the new upcoming flagship phones, and the X2 Elite and Elite Extreme for laptops will bring to the table. And especially the latter, a completely new chip with up to 18 cores, a tremendously improved GPU, and a pretty insane RAM capacity potential looks quite tasty. So let's get into it. Before we get into the actual information and some impressions from the overall trip, let's start with some housekeeping items. And full transparency, the good folks from Qualcomm invited us to Maui so we could have a look at what they had to announce and share it with you guys. So they covered our flights, accommodation and made absolutely sure that we had a good time. But I will do my very best to not let this cloud or color my early impressions of the actual information we got here too much. But that said, everything they had to show is their numbers anyways and also for reference devices that will most likely not see the light of day. So we will have to wait for final phones and laptops until we can properly validate their claims. So like with every bit of information that has been directly shared from manufacturers or chip makers in this instance, take everything I am about to show you with a grain of salt. And I will do my very best to provide some early context when we get to our initial benchmark results. And with that out of the way, how about we start with the mobile side of things and let's kick things off with Snapdragon's fastest SoC for the next generation of high-end smartphones, the 8 Elite Gen 5. I do not want to get too much into the technical nitty gritty and break down the architecture for you, but at its core the new silicon consists of the third generation of Qualcomm's in-house designed custom Orion CPU cores, two of which are so called prime cores, tasked with doing the heavy lifting when it comes to demanding applications and for everything else or when multitasking performance is needed, you get an additional six performance cores. But what does this mean for the real world? Well, I'm glad you asked, since we have been able to not only get some reference scores from Snapdragon themselves, but also validate them at an early benchmarking session, again with Qualcomm provided reference devices. These are early results and we will have to wait and see what kind of performance we can expect once we get some proper releases. But for now, the new chip sure looks incredibly impressive, especially in Geekbench, where it pretty much stomps the competition in the multi-core test and can improve quite significantly in single core performance as well, especially compared to its direct predecessor and therefore is sitting right up there with Apple's latest offerings. We of course also get a new GPU and judging from our wildlife extreme numbers, the new sliced architecture with numerous under the hood improvements is really making a difference here and the Elite Gen 5 can improve significantly on the old 8 Elite. While I am for now not particularly into mobile gaming, it will be very interesting to see how this will translate into the real world and what kind of frame rates we can expect from the next generation of smartphones for all of your virtual entertainment needs. Of course we can also not talk about a new architecture without mentioning AI and the 8 Elite Gen 5 also comes with an updated NPU which apparently improves by almost 40% over the older 8 Elite. As always, time will tell how app developers will use the additional chip on the silicon, but Snapdragon spent quite a bit of time talking about agentic AI as a whole and personally I would be on board here since talking to my device in natural voice to streamline what I am doing and maybe finally be able to do things in parallel sure sounds kinda nice. So let's see how soon we can get there and when the much promised revolution in how we interact with tech is going to happen. Qualcomm also made a pretty big deal out of a new codec, APV, which should tremendously improve image quality with higher bit rates and better compression for those of you filming your content professionally with your smartphone. And if you are like me and shoot most of your travel content with your phone, the 8 Elite Gen 5 also features some pretty extensive updates to its visual signal processing 
processing. So yeah, consider me excited for the new devices. But our time in Hawaii was not only about smartphones, but the folks at Snapdragon also announced their second generation of laptop silicon and alongside the refreshed Snapdragon X2 Elite, there is also the new kit on the block, the even higher end X2 Elite Extreme. The flagship notebook SoC improves up on the X2 Elite by increasing the core count to a total of 18, being divided into 12 prime cores and 6 performance variants, all of which also feature Qualcomm's custom 3rd gen Orion architecture. Once again, I will not get into too much detail here today, since for one, we have a dedicated video coming with some early benchmark results. And guys, these look very juicy, so please make sure you are subscribed to not miss that one. And in addition, actual devices will apparently only be available in early 2026. In a nutshell, we will get significantly faster performance for both single and multi-core loads. And of course, also on the GPU side, while requiring substantially less power to achieve that uplift. They also spent quite a bit of time during the keynote discussing creators, so while even more apps in the Adobe lineup will run natively on the ARM platform, 3D artists will also benefit from the same support with new versions of Max and Cinema 4D and ZBrush arriving in early 2026. And personally, I look forward to seeing if the new X2 Elite Extreme will be able to handle our video editing workflow in Resolve 20 a little better than the previous generation. Alright good people, that should actually be all for today. Once again, today was about the SoC, so we are talking about the chip that will power the next wave of high-end smartphones and laptops. So at this point everything is all very theoretical, like it always is with chip launches, and we will have to wait and see how much of it will really shape, change and hopefully improve your very own individual user experience. However, based on what Qualcomm has shown us and the early benchmark numbers we've seen, everything looks very promising. With considerable gen-on-gen -gen uplifts not only in terms of raw compute performance, but also with solid improvements in power efficiency. As I mentioned earlier, I'm also working on another video with some initial performance impressions of the X2 Elite Extreme, so be sure to subscribe. And that's also about it from Hawaii for now, but for a more personal touch and behind the scenes content, please make sure to check out my Instagram. There's lots more to see about my time here on Maui. As always, thanks a ton for watching folks. Please do me the favor and hit the like and subscribe button on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.